Good evening. My name is Reverend Eric Salgado. My father came from Santurce, Puerto Rico in 1926. I was born in the Bronx in 1970. Like many children, I was born with a chronic asthma to, to the many uh, transfer station or garbage uh, recycling station that we have in the Bronx. So my parents, they moved to Puerto Rico. So now you know why I speak the way I do with this accent. <laughs> You think the city of New York is ready to have a mayor with an accent like you? I said, I should sue the city because I have this accent because the city was not taking care of the pollution in the Bronx. But anyhow, I'm suing everybody. So I'm telling you, don't get close to me, I might sue you too. Um, I wanna, I'm actually a pastor in Brooklyn. I have one of the biggest churches in Bensonhurst. I started one in Bensonhurst. It was difficult for any African American or Latino go through. I remember that many people told me, Pastor, you have to concentrate going to Coney Island on Third Avenue. But today I'm proud to say we have a church with 1,100 members or Latino in Bensonhurst. We serve more than a thousand families per week, giving them uh, food through a food pantry that we have. I jump into this race because I believe that the next mayor, besides being a politician, I'm the only one who is actually, who are not actually a politician, I'm a rookie politician, but I'm trying to serve the city of New York. We believe, I believe that we need a mayor who's gonna be sensitive to the need of the people. A lot of people are depending on food pantry, a lot of people are depending on food stock, a lot of people are falling behind in their mortgage payment. And we need somebody who could actually talk well, but who could also act and be there for when people need it the most. My mother lived over here in the Bronx. My father just passed away three months ago. And he told me, always go forward and let nobody to put you down. And yes, I'm running for mayor. I want to be a different mayor. I want to be a mayor for everyone in this city. Thank you so much. transferred two and three times. We were promised when opened in 1969 a monorail to go to and from this number six train, which never happened. In 2010, MTA cut back our bus service, creating additional transfers and lack of going from section five to section, way, section one by way of one bus, unless we wait long periods of time. We have, we have been recently been told that we can expect Metro North to service Co-op City in about five years through the efforts of the borough president. Where do you stand in providing us better and much needed transportation? I believe it's all about priority. The current mayor is talking about extending the, the, the MTA system to Psychocos, New Jersey. Well, we have more than 500,000 people in Staten Island without uh, the service, especially when they are the one who provide this more than 600 million in surplus using the Verrazano. I suggest that over there we have to extend the R train across the Verrazano. And over here it shouldn't be a big deal to extend the uh, number six train all the way to Cobb City. And we also have to make sure that we do something in regard of the, all the pollution that is coming through the Cross Bronx Expressway. And they have been, uh, um, they have been, uh, they have been many politicians working in seeking federal funding to create a tunnel instead of the highway that is killing our pollution. We have to make sure that we provide more buses for the for the for Cobb City, and definitely we could do that because uh, we have the people who are actually going to pay for that when they use those services. Next question. This is for all the candidates. Co-op city residents have had to endure high traffic in and around the community. Neighboring Bay Plaza plans an expansion opening next spring with 87 new stores and a Macy's. Both New York City and New York State Department of Transportation has yet to come up 
with any new roadways in and out of the mall other than widening the exit ramp of off I-95 North. New entrances and exits are needed and need be done off the Hutchinson from the rear of the mall by the theater. Will you have a traffic study done to assist in obtaining this new roads? I don't know, Anthony. You are seeing senior citizens. The only one who you're not seeing is George McDonald tonight. So let's have that clear. Let's spend the senior citizen over here tonight. First of all, we have to talk all about priority. The current mayor is paying so much attention about the roads, the tunnels, and everything in downtown Manhattan. He even want to put a toll on 96th Street to prevent the people from El Barrio and Washington High on coming on downtown Manhattan. It is unbelievable. He want to create a, a lease society in downtown Manhattan. They have so many cameras, they have so many equipment, and he forgot about the rest of the city. That's why it is important for somebody like myself to come from the private sector and challenge all these politicians. But guess what? It's so difficult. We raised $273,000 in this race, and ABC excluded me because they say I didn't raise enough money. They, uh, put it back university, they say they, don't, they, they cannot include me in the poll Thank because you. they only include people who were elected Thank before. You. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I continue my next section, don't worry. Let, let's hear it. Co-op City are in dire need of a youth center, such as a Y, as well as after-school programs. Truman High School in the past offered after-school programs, but no longer does. What will you do for the betterment of Co-op City's youth? So I was saying, I sued the Quinty Park University for 1.5 million <laughs> because they say that they don't include me in the poll. How am I going to go open the poll if they don't include me in the poll? <laughs> they say they only include people who held office before, but they have John Casamadiri with 37% of the Republican Party. He never ran before. He never held an office before. <laughs> but I guess they have, and it's disturbing, it should be a matter of concern for any citizen, anyone. Our founding father, the idea was for anyone to come from the private sector, serve in the government, and then go back to the private sector. But it's impossible to challenge them. That's why they, once they go in poverty, they stay in poverty forever, because no one, nobody could challenge them. However, my plan is to make the school facility available for, not, for the non-for-profit organization to use it in non-school hours to provide those programs for the youth. I have to say that because otherwise I'm going to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Salgado. Um, next question. The youth for years, Co-op City shareholders have had to endure the expenditure of millions of dollars each year for the removal of old wooden flooring due to the mastic, which is the glue holding the floors in place, with, which has asbestos in it. Yet the asbestos does not become airborne unless heated to above 800 degrees. New York City Department of Environmental Protection and the mayor refuse to relieve Co-op City of having asbestos abatement done despite thousands of negative test results. Would you assist in relieving us of such a burden? When it comes to a public health issue, I take it very seriously. Because the government could tell you that there's no risk. They always say there's no risk. And it's very difficult for the public to prove 
when somebody is diagnosed with a skin cancer or somebody is diagnosed with asthma, they just saying it just happened. For example, you know how many children suffer from asthma in the Bronx, and they don't have, they can't conclude and say this is what causes this. Who knows if, it, if all this aspect of, aspect of that is there is actually affecting people? The government they know that is for their convenience, economically convenience, to say that there is not a problem. But it's the people that want to have to fight. And if there's a problem, we want to know that it's removed. Nobody want to live with anything that might cause a problem in the future. Because, you know, the science, they always changing from one theory to another. Or it is good, or it is bad. So we have to make sure that everybody's safe in Cobb City as well. Co-op City is in need of a water reclamation plan to provide water to our power plant. Reclamation of water from a neighboring DEP sewage pumping station benefits both the city and Co-op City as a green project and would save millions of gallons of city drinking water now being used by the power plant by purifying the city water, the sewer water. The present administration is against this such systems are used throughout the country, but not in New York City. Would you be willing to assist in having the city build this type of system jointly with Co-op City? Without question, if we need it, we have to make sure that we provide the public with the service, the basic service that we need. When it comes to water, what, what could be more uh, needed than water and clean water and advanced with the technology that is available. Unfortunately, uh, the current administration, they're always looking about other things than the actual need from the outer border. So of course, the, the answer is yes. We have to provide that service. Co-op City uses its own vehicles and staff to collect garbage from its high-rise buildings and townhouses and to bring it to a central collection area. This makes it unnecessary for New York and uh, New York Department of Sanitation to engage its trucks and manpower in the process. This represents a cost savings to the city. How should New York City compensate us Co-op City for this considerable expense. Uh, I believe that all city services should be provided to all citizens, all New Yorkers. However, I disagree with the rest of my colleague. I believe if someone is not using the city services, for example, I send my children, my six children, to private school. If, you, if you're not utilizing the $20,000 that costs to educate a child in the city, at least you should get a credit to the real estate taxes. And we could do the same thing by giving people the credit to the real estate tax if they're not utilizing the services from the city. The city has been making a lot of money, and yes, something can be done, and it, could, it should be done by giving people tax credit to the real estate tax. If you're not using the services, yet you pay your taxes, let's give them some recognition back. Let's say thank you for not making the city spend the money and get this tax credit to the real estate taxes. This past week, this past week, the court struck down the New York City's stop and frisk policy. This policy had made our city's minority population targets of the New York City Police Department. The present administration has vowed to appeal the court's ruling. Where do you stand? Are you in favor of stop and frisk? Be specific. Stop and freeze needs to be abolished. I believe that stop and freeze is being used by the current administration to replace the community policing. The mayor is very intelligent. 
New York City is not a melting pot. New York City is a collection of different communities. When you go to an African-American community, you see no one but African-American. When you go to the Latino community, you see no one but Latino, and so on. So the mayor, he's very intelligent. He said, let's reduce the forces from 40,000 to 34,000, and then, then let's send this troop to the African-American and the Latino community, and let's stop and freeze them. And let me tell you, I'm the only one in this panel who was actually stopped and not freeze because I told the law officer, I'm running for mayor. He told me, shut up and go back to your vehicle, sir. My assistant boy said, he's really running for mayor, shut up and go back to your vehicle. After he checked all my paper, he came, he gave it to me. I went down, I was on 121st Street and 2nd Avenue. He ran back, he knocked Thank the you. window, he shook my you. head, he said, I'm sorry, you know you was really running for mayor. Thank you. administration vetoed an oversight agency of the NYPD. Where do you stand in having an outside oversight agency to oversee the NYPD? Every time Anthony Tucker convinced him, he just said he's white. We just we didn't notice that because he called himself Carlito and then Antonio sometimes get confused. I call him somebody else in Spanish besides you and me. Anyhow. Anyhow. I believe we don't have to create another agency. This is just adding and adding. So we have to get someone to watch the other and watch the other. I believe that we have to, we don't need another uh, agency, we need another mayor, we need another commissioner, and we are about to see that very soon. But for the federal government to actually watch what's going on in the NYPD, that's not going to hurt us. It's good to know that somebody is watching, because the possibility for Mayor Bloomberg to get stopped in the stop and free operation is zero. In fact, the only community where I'm going to continue doing stop and freeze when I become mayor is in the community where Michael Bloomberg chooses to move on. to give a closing statement. I'm going to start with my end. First of all, I want to thank all of the residents of Cobb City. You have been wonderful with me. Uh, thank you for inviting me. I am not a politician. I'm a reverend. I'm a pastor. I have a congregation. But I don't believe none of the career politicians have done anything that you could feel proud of and say, this guy deserves to be the next mayor. In fact, when Hurricane Sandy struck, they were talking about closing the Verrazano Bridge while we were still fishing body under the river. It was the mayor and some of the people who are in this table right now. It is disturbing. While well, I was hoping the most vulnerable one, they were talking about how they want to become mayor, how they want to become the most powerful man in New York City. That's why I jump into this race. And everyone, even if you don't agree with everything I have to say, it has to be upon your concern that a, a, a person from the private sector should come out and do the sacrifice that I'm doing to challenge them. Now they're talking about a municipal identification card for the undocumented immigrant because I started talking about that. Now they're talking about building, building, building resilience to another superstar in the shore of New York City because I began to explain how important is that because of my experience of Puerto Rico. I'm a father of six, so I beat you on that. On November, you can vote for him. On September 10th, vote for me. I thank you so much.